What is up guys? I'm wearing a terribly mismatching outfit so you know that it's going to be another install video. Today's install video is going to be for the JDL FT86 oil cooler. Now the reason that I'm going with the FT86 oil cooler from JDL is because this is the largest oil cooler kit that I could find. I don't think that anybody else makes a larger oil cooler kit. This is a 19 row Cetrab Cetrab oil cooler, I think. Cetrab is a really good company and like reliable and quality oil cooler manufacturer. So JDL sources their oil coolers from them. So that's really cool. And also the fact that it's 19 rows, I think is the largest one that I could find online as far as oil cooler kits. Now, of course you can build your own oil cooler kit because it's really not that hard, but I just decided to go with one that was already pre-made so that it had these mounts. Anyway, today I'm gonna to teach you guys how to install this. I believe this is the only video on YouTube for how to install this specific kit. So I'll try to make it as detailed as possible. As you guys can see behind me, I have already removed the front bumper off my car. And the reason that I did that without telling you guys how to is because my front bumper is different with the front splitter. And also I have these bolts that help me put it on and off. Take off front bumper, however you do it. Normally, um, if you have a stock front bumper and everything, there's just some 12 millimeter and uh, flathead pop-up bolts on the top. Um, there's three or four bolts on the side, or three or four plastic clips on the side, on each side, and then there's some bolts at the bottom. But anyway, get your front bumper off, and then that's where we're gonna start this install video. I know that it's been a while since I've made a video, and the car is long overdue for an update as far as the build. I'll get to that eventually. I just have a bunch of stuff with school and work going on, so I apologize for the lack of videos. So the first step to installing this oil cooler is to come to the left side of the car, because that's where we're gonna be mounting the oil cooler, and you're gonna need to remove this plastic piece right here. Now this plastic piece is held on by two plastic clips, one right here, and then one on the inside, which is visible from the top down area. So this one pops out with a flat edge screwdriver. And now if you look through this little gap in between this plastic uh, piece that goes around the headlights and in the front bash bar, you can see right down there, there's the plastic clip that we're gonna be removing. So I've already removed it with a flat edge screwdriver, but that comes out. Now this plastic piece comes right off leaving us a ton of space to put the oil cooler. So then the next step is going to be to relocate this, which I believe is the horn, but if I'm wrong, I'm probably gonna get chewed up in the comments section below. Anyway, we're gonna relocate this to the already pre-drilled hole to the left of the horn. So if you look to the left of it directly across, there are two different holes. One is higher and one is lower. I'm gonna relocate it to the lower one where two pieces of metal meet. Now that I've removed the horn, I'm going to place this bracket, which is the bracket that has just an L shape. One is like a Z, and then the other one is like an L, so we're gonna be placing the L bracket into that hole and bolting it there. But I don't like the fact that there are these bumps right here. The bul bumps were meant to hold the horn in here and stop it from twisting, and I don't like that they're there because it kind of makes it so that this does not sit flush. So I'm gonna get a Dremel tool and I'm going to see if I can Dremel down the bumps down here just to make this a smoother surface. This is not required, this is just me being picky. So now that I've shaved this area down a little bit with the Dremel tool, you can see that this now sits a lot more flush and that's how I'd like it. So now we're just gonna take the screw, put it through, and you can start to screw it in with your hand, but because it's a self-locking nut, which is a really nice touch by JDL, you're gonna need to complete this with a wrench and an Allen uh, key. So the rear is a 10 millimeter and the front is a four Allen. So now that the mount is in, I'm going to go ahead and relocate this horn or whatever the thing that we removed is. So I'm gonna take the cable and plug it back in. And this lets me know how much distance I have. So as you can see where I pointed out earlier, this second hole right here, that is like the perfect amount of space as far as how much pull this wire has. So this is the bolt that we removed um, that was once holding it in. I found a nut that perfectly fits it in my garage. This kit does not come with one. I found this, so if you don't have this and you want to reinstall it, then you're gonna have to go buy it. And that's how it's going to sit. Now the next step to the install is installing this second mount, which I said is shaped kind of like a Z, or an S, I'm not sure. Now this mount is going to go right here. So this is the front of the car. If you look under here, there's this hole right here. Now I'm not sure if in my escapades of building this car, I removed something that that hole used to hold in because that hole is just open for me and I'm not sure why. It, it's, it's kind of through there. Anyway, so you can see right here that there's a hole. We're gonna run the bolt that holds in that mount 
into this hole. So now that the two mounts are installed, the final step is to actually put the oil cooler onto the mount. So that's what the final product as far as the mounting should look like. As you can see, there's a bit of distance between this plastic piece and the oil cooler. What's nice about this oil cooler is that it does not mount to any of the bottom pieces of the car, which if you get in a front end collision and it tears off these pieces, it will not tear off this oil cooler too. This oil cooler is mounted higher, so it should theoretically be safe in an impact, especially because it's behind this bash bar. So now let's get to running the uh, hoses and putting the sandwich plate in. So now we're gonna look at the engine bay of the car. And right here you can see the oil filter. We're gonna need to remove this oil filter in order to install this sandwich plate. Now the sandwich plate is what runs the oil to the oil cooler and then back into the car. What's nice about the JDL kit is that this is a MoCal oil, um, oil sandwich plate. MoCal is like probably the best in the business and also it comes with this thermostat right here so that the oil cooler does not start operating until your car is at a proper temperature and that way it lets the car heat up properly. We're gonna start by removing the oil filter. Some people might need a special tool to do it. Now from my experience if you just give this a hard twist, it'll pop off just like that. Now to install the sandwich plate, you're going to want to take the actual sandwich plate and if you see this piece right here, this long tube, this needs to go through both the sandwich plate and this spacer thing and it goes on top like this. Now the part that has the actual things coming out, that's going to go on top and this part right here is going to go on bottom with this rubber part touching the surface because if you look, there's a rubber part in, be in beneath this uh, sandwich plate. So that's gonna go on top of this, creating a seal there. And this one will go into the bottom, creating a seal there. It's gonna go like this, and then you just screw this in. Now I'm gonna to demonstrate to you guys how you guys should run the hoses for this oil cooler kit. Now I spent about two hours trying to figure out the best way to run these hoses that would not get it anywhere close to the engine or any of the spinning parts on the engine so that they don't cut and open and leak all your oil out and destroy your engine. So. Right here we're looking at the sandwich plate, and on the sandwich plate I put both 90 degree angles. Now there are two hoses on this kit. One hose has 90 degree angles on both ends, and one hose has 90 degree angle on one end, and then like this like 25 degree angle, this is shape on the other end. So, both of the ones attaching to the sandwich plate are 90 degrees. Then this one runs on top, around here on top of the air box. I zip tied it to this cord right here to make sure that it kind of stays stable. Now it comes up here, over the air box, and then down here, through behind the back of the headlight. Now you can't really see it from the way that this video is angled. There's a very easy hole to find that goes behind this headlight and then it goes down here and connects at another 90 degrees to the oil cooler. Now on the other side, you can kind of see maybe that's the side where the crescent piece goes. So the one that kind of is like this angle connects the oil cooler right there and that pipe runs up from where it is right here next to the headlight and behind the crash beam up here behind the radiator, through here, and then I connected it to the other hose just to make sure it was stable. Then I brought it here under this air box, but it's still very close to the air box. As you can see, you cannot see the hose anywhere near any of the pieces that spin, and it comes back around and connects to the sandwich plate right here. So then you're gonna wanna screw those on tight. There's actually a recommended torque, which I believe is 29.5 foot-pounds, but there should be a little sheet from Setrab that shows you how much they should be torqued. Then after all that is torqued and after all that is on and you make sure everything is good, start your car and leave it for about 15 to 20 minutes to make sure that no oil leaks because in that amount of time, the thermostat should open and allow oil to start running through and you'll be able to see if there are leaks anywhere. Then after that's done, take your car for a test drive Make sure after that that it's still not leaking and periodically check to make sure the car is not leaking because if it is leaking oil, it will be a big problem. For those of you who stayed all the way to the end of this video and didn't close it out as soon as my instructions finish, there is a little bit of a surprise for you guys because I have some advice that's just things that I thought of and things that I've tested that I think work pretty well. The oil cooler is kind of placed in a weird place along the front of the car, meaning that there is the opening, there is this grill, right? And that's where the air flows in from. But where the air is flowing in from, kind of hits all the way about here, right? But the oil cooler is all the way over here. So I had a fear that this would not get enough air. So I decided to do two things. The first thing is if you see right here, there is a piece of ducting that ducts the air from the side in towards the radiator. Now I took that off of this side because realistically we want this air to shoot this direction so that it hits the oil cooler. So there were three screws 
that holds it in. I just took that off. So now there's more ducting coming in towards the oil cooler. And I did one more thing. If you look at the front bumper of the FRS, it has these vents. But normally these vents do not actually have holes, unlike mine. Now you can either buy these ones with actual holes that cost like $70 from 86 speed, or you can just cut them out like I did, and it looks terrible, but whatever. So this is, this is kind of what it looks like. Now there's air shooting in through here. But I realize that where the air is shooting in is about here at this wheel deflector cover thingy. So what I did was I took the air um, deflector that we just took off of the front grill, and I put it right here on this opening so that when the air flows through the newly cut vent, it shoots this way and into the oil cooler. Now the way that I did that was I zip tied the top hole from where it was screwed into there into right here, there's a bit of a hole right here, this triangle hole. Then I put the side one on another hole that's just right there. And then I drilled an additional hole on the bottom really easily just into the plastic and I zip tied that third hole. So now it's holding on really tight. And I'm gonna go to a track day soon, so I'll tell you guys if it comes off, but I really doubt that it will. So that's gonna do it for this install. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you guys found it helpful. And if you guys have any questions about anything that I went over in this video, make sure to leave it in the comments below. Mitchell, do you wanna say anything? Uh, no, I'm good. Is it? Sure, yeah. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys subscribe, follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter, and I'll see you guys next time. So strong.